Hello, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to use the inlay toolpath strategy when we need to machine parts that need to fit together accurately. If we take a look at this quick example here, we've got a letter E. Let's say, for example, we needed to machine a pocket on the left hand side of the E, and then we're going to profile machine around the outer edge of the E on the right hand side. Now, in practice, these would probably be cut out of two different materials. You'd probably cut the the female pocket out of the base material and then cut the letter E out of another piece of material, probably a different color or a different type of material, and then take the one on the right and drop it into the pocket on the left. Now that sounds very simple and very straightforward, but in practice, it's actually quite difficult. If we take a look in our three dim dimensional view here, if we zoom in on the left hand side, we have the, the pocket. So we've machined a, a pocket using, here we've used a half inch end mill. And you'll see that in the corners, so these corners here, the radius of the cutter is left in the pocket. It's impossible to machine a square corner using a rotating cutter. Where the cutters, it's formed a radius in the corners, where the cutters come along this edge and down around this corner, it's possible to form a sharp corner. The same on this corner here, it can machine a sharp corner. But then again, on the internal corner, we've got the radius of the cutter. So when machining the pockets, we're always going to get these radiuses on the external corners. Then when we go on to machine the male inlay, so we're going to cut this part out of a different piece of material. And the cutter is going to run around the outer edge of the letter E to form the shape, probably cutting all the way through the material. Now again, where we've got an external corner here, the cutter can run along and form a sharp corner. In the top right hand corner here, it can run along this edge and down the front of the E and form a sharp, two sharp corners. But these sharp corners aren't going to fit into this female pocket because of the radius. But then when the cutter comes around to the internal radius, you'll see here on the E on the right hand side that we've got the radius of the cutter again. If we look at the pocket, because of the nature of the cutting, we're able to form a sharp corner here. So if we pick this piece up and try to slot it into the hole on the left, the two pieces aren't going to fit together. That's why it's important to use the, the what we call the inlay toolpath strategy. If we just pin this open for a moment, you'll see that the inlay options are available from the, the tool, toolpath operations menu. There's a number of different inlay options, but something to point out before we start is that you must always use the same size cutter to machine the female pocket as you do to machine around to create the male insert or inlay. If you don't use the same cutters, then you'll end up with the wrong radius in each corner. Let's take a closer look at how to create inlaid toolpaths. Let's just reset this preview. So reset the preview, go back to a solid. We just split the view. So I'm going to say view tile horizontally so we can see the letter E's in the top and the three dimensional view in the bottom window. So we're going to machine the female pocket on the left hand side here. So we'll open the inlay machining toolpath form. So we're going to say machine the female inlay, which is the pocket typically. We're going to say we're going to create a pocket Let's cut this pocket quarter of an inch deep into our half inch thick material. And we're going to use, for this case, we're going to use a half inch end mill. Um, in practice, you'd probably use a smaller end mill. Uh, the smaller the radius, the better, because then you don't get the a radius being formed on the, on the lettering or the logo that you're cutting. But to help to emphasize the, the effect of the radius of the cutter, we'll use quite a large tool here. So half an inch end mill. So we're going to cut quarter of an inch deep with this tool and we're going to use offset machining. Now if we say calculate, the software has automatically calculated the toolpath for us. Open the preview window. So I'm going to say preview this toolpath. Let's make the, give this some fill color to make it a little bit easier to see what we're looking at. If we zoom in now, you'll see that we've cut quarter of an inch deep. A little tip here is You'll notice as I'm placing the cursor in the three dimensional window, in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the X, the Y and the Z 
information being displayed. So here you'll see that I'm X 3.78 inches, Y, we're looking down in this court, this region here, so X, Y, and it's showing me a Z depth of quarter of an inch, which is correct. Okay, so we've machined the female pocket, and you'll see that we've formed a radius in each corner here. If we go back and switch the toolpath preview on, now the toolpath preview looks okay, but if we switch on the solid preview, you'll see now if we zoom in, zoom into this top right hand corner, you'll see that we've got the, because of the half inch radius of the cutter that we're using, we're not being able to machine right into the corner, so we have this, this radius. And that's what we're seeing in the three dimensional view. So if we zoom back out, so F to zoom to, to fit again, Let's switch the solid and the wireframe off for a moment. Now if we were to machine the, the male insert, so we're going to cut all the way around the outer edge of this letter E. If we say close the form, close preview, let's go back to the inlay toolpath form. This time we're going to cut, cut the male inlay, so we're going to machine this all the way through. So straight, all the way through the half inch thick material. We need to make sure that we're using the same diameter cutter again, so we'll use the half inch end mill and calculate. Calculate the toolpath. The toolpath appears in the three dimensional view. If we preview the results, so preview this toolpath, you'll see that we've done two passes so that we've profiled machine two passes at quarter of an inch each, each level to get half an inch deep. Again, everything looks fine. If we preview, switch the toolpath on so we can preview the toolpath show the toolpath in the two-dimensional view. You'll see that in the two-dimensional view, everything looks correct. The toolpath is going around the outer edge of the letter E. But something that you can't notice very easily is the fact that the inlay toolpath is actually rounding off the corners. So what the toolpath has done is automatically rounded the edges, the external corners on the letter E. So if we switch this to be solid view, and we zoom into the top right hand corner again, you'll see that this profile toolpath is cutting around the outer edge of the E, but it's adding a radius around the corner. So it's chopping off this corner portion of the of the external corners. Now this is very important as we've just been discussing because if we look at this corner here, what that does is it allows the two pieces to fit together. So again, looking in the three dimensional view, let's double click to maximize. We've got the we've got the radius here being formed by the by the male inlay, and that's going to match the radius and the pocket. So the two, if we took the took these two parts, so we took this letter E on the right hand side, took it out of the material because it's been cut free, it would drop into that pocket. Now we say it would drop into the pocket, but at the moment we're cutting exactly if we say tall view horizontal again, we're cutting exactly to the boundaries of the vectors. So we're cutting exactly to the edge of the letter E in the pocket, and we're cutting exactly around the outer edge of the letter E on the right hand side for the male inlay. Now that would give us two parts that were really identical sizes, and you probably wouldn't get them to fit together unless you used a mallet or you were able to clamp them together. In practice, you really need to add an allowance to the toolpath. In most cases, the allowance would be machined into the, the female pocket. So you would machine the pocket very slightly bigger to allow the male inlay to drop into that pocket. Now the, the size of the allowance is very dependent on the materials that you're cutting, the precision of your machine, also whether you're, you need to apply glue for example, if we were going to take this E and drop the two together and then glue it in place, you definitely need a gap to allow for some glue to, to hold the two parts in place. So to do that, if we go back and machine the, the inlay pocket, so we'll say double click to edit the toolpath. On the female inlay, so female inlay pocket toolpath, we're going to leave the depth exactly the same, the same cutting strategy, the same size cutter, but on the form, there's a very important field that we need to fill in. Here we have the pocket allowance. Now, if you're cutting very small components, then you may only, only need a, an allowance of maybe five or ten thousandths. If it, they're very large letters, you probably need a bigger allowance. 
in this case these letters are actually uh, 12 inches high so I'm going to use an allowance here of say 30,000 so 0 0.030 and this will help us see the result in the three di in the two dimensional view so if we say recalculate the toolpath the toolpath on the right hand side here looks almost exactly the same it's very difficult to see whether there's been any noticeable change if we say preview the toolpath you'll see that it's very very slightly bigger but it was difficult to see that if we go back to the two dimensional view preview the toolpath if we zoom in you'll see now the we have the blue the dotted lot sorry the blue line there for the the vector boundary but you'll see the the light blue or pale blue that spit that represents the material cut by the half inch diameter end mill is now cutting slightly bigger than the selected vector for the letter e this is going to cut us a pocket that's 30 thousandths bigger all round that will then allow the the male insert to drop into that pocket so just to go through that again so pocket specify an allowance if we make it bigger for example let's say we've got a 60 thousandths allowance recalculate you'll see that it's overcutting so the two-dimensional view if we zoom out a little bit the software is has calculated the toolpath that's machining a pocket 60 thousandths bigger all the way around as i say the the allowance is fairly dependent on the materials and the precision of the of your machine there is another um there are some alternative inlay options let's just delete the toolpaths that we've got here so if we say delete toolpath delete toolpath reset the preview for a moment so reset preview if we work with the letter e on the on the left hand side here go back to the inlay toolpath form let's say we wish to machine a stepped mail inlay so stepped we're going to cut all the way through the material we're going to use the same half inch end mill but this time we need to specify a depth for a shoulder so let's say we're going to cut to a depth of say 0.25 of an inch so quarter of an inch deep and we want we want to overcut around the outer edge by let's say 0.3 of an inch so now if we say calculate the toolpath the toolpath looks very similar we maximize the three-dimensional view toolpath looks very similar there but it's now a stepped male inlay so if we preview this toolpath you'll see the toolpath is has created a if we switch on the color for a moment so switch on some color so dark red delete the waste material you'll see now that we've got the the top face of the letter e is exactly the same so this would this would fit into a pocket that was machined all the way through the material and probably pushed through from the back but then we've got a shoulder on the back if we edit the toolpath you'll see that the shoulder is 0.3 of an inch wide so the distance between the edge of the e and the shoulder is 0.3 of an inch so if you would cut a pocket into some material all the way through the material using the half inch cutter you could then insert this letter e from the back and the shoulder would stop the letter from pushing all the way through the material and you could probably glue this into place or some customers actually machine a pocket on the reverse of the material that this fits into so again just to summarize using the inlay toolpath option the software will automatically radius external and internal corners and both the pockets or the female pocket and the male insert inlay to ensure that the parts go together.